trying something different. I don't know. It's a little bit loud, I think. I have not played this at all. So yeah, I I can't get it to to show Space Quest 6 anymore. I can't get OBS to capture the window. I don't know why. But um I don't want to play Soldier of Fortune 2. Very much was not not digging that game. This this might be fun, I don't know. I don't even know what type of game this is, so. I don't have a gamepad. There we go. Okay, that's easy enough. to explode. Eee. Game failed. Wait, what? Oh, eee. I died. Alright. Mash Ouch, that hurt. Err, can't believe I'm still alive. These fungi must have broken my fall. Is this a sewer? Look at the cute little glowing rats. Those things from before were simply unbelievable. Am I hallucinating again? Or is this another one of Noah's tricks? It's simply not possible for humans to move like that. And why would he appear here of all of a sudden? He attacked me. Ugh, my head is pounding. From what I can recall, that lunatic enjoys torturing his prey in the dark. So am I going to be running from a Plague Doctor dude this entire time? I don't know. I hurt my wrist and ankle in the fall. I better fix these before he finds me again. Press the tab. Alright. Acquire hand part, acquire foot part, finish body restoration. These spore plants have mutated after being exposed to poisonous radioactive industrial waste. The DNA of these plants has been seriously influenced by the radioactive material. Hills they glow. Sweet. Hello little glowing rats. I love my glowing rat friends. This looks like a cyborg rat nest. Where did it come from? Oh. It's unfortunate there's no power, but the cable seems to be in good condition. Okay. 
So we figure out how to get power going? This fungus seems to be highly invasive. It's spreading everywhere. I better not go that way. Robotic skeleton. Oh no, there's a rat under my hat. Okay, our hat is very important. Can we just steal his um leg or whatever? Foot. Oh, okay. So what does this do? Makes a pipe pot. Where am I chasing this poor rat? Why doesn't that chase the rat? Okay. We did it. Looks alright. Am I wearing like a domino mask? I don't know. So I have a keypad. Oh, okay. It's just a door. A repair room in the sewer. Okay, it won't let me leave again, so... This flyer advocates roverism? It's sent that group of people who believe in Beeson. That madman Noah is a believer of this Beeson. Bison. I'm just going to go and call it Bison. Pray to our bison. He brings with him a birth twig, walks through the yard of God, and brings the lost one's vivid expectation by spreading God's waves. God of reception, we sing for you. Our bodies are flesh as well as iron, and you will guide us into fusion. All the people sing for the praised God of fusion and communication, bison, bison, bison. You are the king of the birds. You lead our lost souls. We will follow your hands and embrace the terrain of gods. By that time, humans and robots will be fused into one being in the arms of God. Okay, uh, I want to know what roverism is. The robot population rose sharply at the beginning of the 22nd century, and the traditional religions were not able to have a place for these new members of society. New religions and gods came into existence. They are the god of destiny, Lark, the god of oath, Smoff, the goddess of fusion and communication, Bison, goddess of mystery, Ilanio, and the god of sleep, who doesn't have a name, I guess. The gods of roverism opened their arms to both humans and robots. Because of the conflicts between early expansion and old school religions, people saw it as something between a cult. As the word of religion spread, the number of believers increased significantly. 
humans and robots are both ignorant rovers on this land, and they can only get the right direction of life under the guidance of God. This is the reason behind the name Roverism. Interesting. Electrical scissors. I like the uh, aesthetic here. Wait, what's that? Uh oh. What is it? It's a cute kitty. Hello, cute kitty. It's you? It's William the cat. Well then. Meow, meow. How did you get here? Go play somewhere else. The last thing I need is more trouble. Don't be mean to the cat. I want the cat to follow us, yes. We have obtained cat. What's this? This must be a maintenance, a maintenance station used by pipeline workers before this place was abandoned. I should be able to recover from my wounds if I can restore the power supply. But I can't do anything about it until I find enough mechanical parts. Without power, this repair station cannot be operated. The cable's severed. I need to replace it. I know where a good cable is. The generator is completely dry. I need to find an alternative source to fire it up. Oh. Alternative power cells. There must be something around here I can use. Okay. Ooh. Screwdriver. Come on, kitty. Let's go explore. Please come with me. Yes. Oh. Oh no, the kitty eats the rats. The power sack inside this cyborg rat is just what I need to fire up the generator. I'll need at least three power sacks. Wow. Okay. We need to catch rats. Can I climb up here? No. Oh. Professional mechanical wrist parts. You've scared all the cyborg rats. Now what am I supposed to do? Aww. Go ahead, William. I need three cyborg rat power sacks. Remember, you're not allowed to damage them. I'm counting on you, cat. Do we get to be the cat? No. Yes. I'm a kitty. I am kitty. I must bounce on my prey. Oh. 
Hello, rat. Hmm. I'm gonna sneak up behind rats. Yum! Cyborg Rat's energy storage pouch. An energy crystal formed inside this cyborg rat. I should be able to use it as a replacement power source. Alright. Interesting. Okay, we know what to do. Take that. Okay, we need to go back down now. Right? No. Well, how do we get onto that level? Oh, this pipe. There we go. Run away. Run away! Rat destruction complete. I've got all the energy pouches. Time to head back. Does William speak English? You did it! You found three power sacks, and they're all in perfect condition, too. Don't get too cocky. You may have gotten those power sacks, but you're also the one who scared away the cyborg rats in the first place. What a good kitty. Let's go, uh, prepare a wrist at the very least. That's the only thing that we actually got a part for. Oh, I'm glad I am playing this, actually, instead of that other thing. Ankle part, oh, nice. Ugh. So those are the rat power sacks? kind of power supply can only conduct energy when the sources are arranged in order from weakest to strongest. Okay. I guess that makes sense. But, um, wait, does it not have power? Oh, I didn't, um, oh, okay, we need the things on the bottom also. Okay. I got it.
Nice. Everyone's ready to go now. Adjust this. I just hope this won't kill me. Okay, titles. Title screen. The thread unravels. Whoa. Love me. Oh, I love this robot. It's like the short circuit robot. Beep, beep, beep. Wakey, wakey, it's time to get up. Damn, you're noisy. What the hell are you doing, BBX? Do you want me to throw you back in the furnace? I'm not going to do a weird voice for the robot. I'm not even going to say the robot's line. Screw the robot. Sure, whatever. Just wait for me to get there and I'll come to you. Okay, let's get this over and done with. Beep boop. Morning. Based on the test results, the mechanical parts of your body are about to collapse. How's that even possible? Didn't I just get new knees? There's nothing I can do about the test results. Take a look for yourself. Uh, hmm. I had artificial eyes implanted when I was on the police force's special team. Mys have multiple view amplifying functions and can switch between different identification modes. They come in handy at a crime scene. However, because eyes haven't been serviced for a long time, many of the functions are no longer working, and even the basic night view mode is now giving me problems. This mechanical arm was installed after the Apocalypse Garden incident. Its internal structure is made out of titanium alloy, greatly improving its strength. This was the most advanced design at the time, however. However, just ten years later, it's already outdated. Bionic mechanical lower limbs, which house bionic muscle tissues, connecting to titanium alloy bones. I recently replaced my old knees with new ones from Morax's repair shop, so I don't know why they're already malfunctioning again. During the Apocalypse Garden incident, in order to save my life, my partner merged part of his own electronic brain with my damaged brain, altering them both drastically. According to official records, this is the only living case of a human brain mer merging with an electronic brain. Although this procedure is completely banned, the authorities turned a blind eye in the incident due to the extenuating circumstances and what they said were my outstanding contributions. This incident has been kept secret from the public. My right lung, liver, and several other internal organs were seriously damaged by an explosion during the Apocalypse Garden incident. My family organized the replacement of these damaged organs with the most advanced bionic artificial organs. This technology is only available to the powerful and wealthy residents of Sky City. But because I'm a stubborn old horse, I refuse to go back to Sky City for regular maintenance. It doesn't help that I like a drink or two, and that messes up the accuracy of the test data. Mechanical hands, complete with a great number of sensing devices at the tips of the fingers. The fingers can simulate the touch and feel of real fingers with great accuracy, making them capable of numerous precise operations. However, because I always forget to apply joint oil, the joints have serious wear and tear. If they remain unmaintained, increasingly bad mobility problems will occur. Uh, so yeah, I... I stink. Have I not looked at everything? I looked at everything. Yes. 
You see, I didn't lie to you. Let me perform an overall maintenance. You do realize that you haven't changed any of my parts in the last two years, right? It's a miracle I can still scan you at all. So stop making a fuss. And just where am I going to find parts for a relic like you? The museum? I should probably donate you to the museum so I can put you on display. <laughs> Initiating self-destruct sequence. Calm down, I'm kidding. Head upstairs to the workshop and I'll give you a quick checkup. Okay. Got this watch end up here. What watch? It's an artificial arm -like app uh, application form. The form was filled out with messy handwriting. Certain fields such as name are still vaguely visible. It wasn't submitted in the end and was left messy with random writing. It was supposed to end up in the rubbish bin. Okay. Oh, did I have that? Sunlight Street. An old-fashioned game console, but the cassette is broken. If I can find new ones, I could play games here. Oh, I love the mirror. Some formal clothing. Some fancy clothing. Oh. Why do I have a, um, like a, a medical mannequin with a plague doctor mask? This beak mask is all we could recover? Wait. Hmm. This uh, poster looks like you now Luffy. Rex is a member of the Illuminati, confirmed. Ooh. Can I grab a cup? Nope. This morning's newspaper. It seems like everyone's talking about Augusto's participation in the campaign. The oral candidate. So let's go upstairs, talk to BBX. This place is haunted. What's wrong? Why are the lights off? Didn't I tell you to wait for me in the interchange station? I think something's over at. There's something over at the armor. Oh, come on. You're a robot that's afraid of ghosts. Just turn the lights on. The lights aren't working. I think the circuit downstairs has malfunctioned. Isn't there anything that still works in this place? Never mind. Let's find out what's going on here first. It's too dark. Oh. I should fix the lights first. Alright. Ghost armor. Where is this? Oh, what? Okay. Oh. That's how this works. 
I was expecting to rotate, like, each of these individual squares, not groups of four of them. Let's try and fix this. There we go. I'm no good at those puzzles. I'll go look at the armor in a sec. Cat must have pushed these documents off the shelf. Mankind is so pretentious. Is this an action figure of ourself? Okay, let's go look at this armor. It's probably just the cat, right? It's just going to be the cat. Yes, it's William. It's just William. The armor's stuck. I can't get it open. I need to figure out a way to save this little guy. According to the information I found in the archives, this armor once belonged to an ancient knight, and his spirit is said to live on inside the armor after his death. If the armor is separated from its weapon, the spirit will become enraged and place a curse on the one who dons the armor. It's true, the curse is real. A weapon? I remember seeing a claymore lying around, but I can't remember where I put it. Okay, let's go find a sword. Is there a sword here? I don't see any swords in this room. Oh, right there. I keep the sword in the bathroom, of course. Messy cupboard. A sharpened two-handed sword. Sweet. That's a huge bathroom. Isn't that William? So you were the ghost in the armor. How did you end up in there, you silly cat? Something isn't right about this armor. You're lucky you didn't get hurt. Go home. I don't have any dried fish for you today. That little scallywag. Finally, go to the interchange station now. Let's 
Oh. It seems either the processor or the decoder isn't working. I remember seeing a processor on the first floor. Uh, hmm. Okay. Let's go get these things. So this is the front door out. Oh. I have lots of cool armor. I'm filled with cat food. Oh, hello, William. Why are you still here? Miss Perry is probably looking for you now. This little guy wants to play with me. I better pretend I didn't see him. Play with the kitty. Have the cat go retrieve it. Free herb, a vital ingredient for my trademarked sobering up drug. These herbs are not easy to come by. Yes, yes. Help from Kitty. Don't give me that attitude. Have you forgotten who saved you earlier? I bet this cunning little thing just wants me to play with him. I don't have any dried fish, right? If you help me, I'll give you some delicious dried fish. How does that sound? William isn't interested. What? You don't want dried fish? I thought it's your favorite. Oh, how about a walk? Get me what I need and I'll take you for a walk. William seems quite keen to go outside. You want to have some fun outside, right? Once I'm done here, I'll take you for a walk. Just get that box down for me first. Kitty to the rescue. Hopefully I didn't break it. Nice work. So um, here's that dried fish we agreed on. <laughs> You don't want it? Alright, I know you want to go outside. Just give me a moment to replace BBX's faulty parts and I'll be right back. So we need a decoder as well. Ooh! Stewed potatoes again. I really need to find some work soon. This uh, apartment is huge. Interesting. Wait, was that a like a closet under the stairs? There are no little wizards living here. All right, no Harry Potters. Now all I need is a decoder. 
I need to find a multi-purpose dismantling tool and check some household appliances. One of them should have compatible hardware. A multi-purpose dismantling tool. Where do I keep such things? Okay. Oh. The tool to dismantle the decoder should be locked here, but I can't recall the code. Oh, what the heck? Weird symbols, alright. The code reference table. Okay. Let's find the code. Seven three two. Maybe. So a thing with numbers, I think I rem remember seeing. Yeah, we'll just go with that. We'll try that. Seven three two. Two is down eye diamond. Down eye diamond. Oh, which down? There are multiple downs. Okay. Down eye. Oh no, there are four digits. What am I doing? There were two twos. Down, I, diamond, diamond. A universal electronic dismantler that can dismantle most electronical parts. <laughs> electronical. The coffee pot, right? No? Now. Aha. Uh -huh. Sure. That's a weird place for a washing machine. Doesn't it have a another washing machine too? Sure, let's just dismantle everything. Ugh. I'm a lazy bum. have any in here I can dismantle. Who needs to do laundry? Really? Okay. A universal digital decoder smart device compatible with a wide range of electronic equipment. It's not like we were doing our laundry anyways.
Here, here's the decoder. Nice, the chips are fixed. Let's test the electronic signals. Okay. That one is where we would need it. This one needs to be bigger and wider and shifted. Um, there we go. Taller, wider, shift. Debugging done. That should do it. Let's try restarting VBX. How do you feel now? Beep. Hey, what's going on? BBX? Beep, beep. Can you still talk? Ah, oh, we screwed it. Um. BBX, are you still with me, buddy? It looks like BBS have, has activated its emergency hibernation mode. It's gonna cost me an arm and a leg to find a mechanic. I'll have to buy the parts and fix it myself. Really? Well, great. Our robot friend is dead. Well, it's hibernating. Can we just go walk the cat? Can I get a moment of peace around here? Okay, William, time for that walk, I promised. Let's go, William. Oh, a cat friend. Did he just ditch me for a female cat? He was begging me to play with him just a minute ago. I guess gals before pals stands true, even for cats. Oh well, I need to visit the repair shop anyway. Hello, little robot. Arnold's grandmother doesn't like you. Oh. Well, that stinks. What do you want to chat about? Um, recent gossip. Do you have any gossip? There is one thing, actually. Maybe you've already heard about it. Some people are terrified because they saw some strange shadows moving near the entrance of the sewers, but I didn't see anything when I went there. They say there are paranormal beings there. What do you want to chat about? I don't want to chat about anything. Let's get out of here. Hello, Afro person. Nope, can't talk. Beating up corpses at home. What? Oh, people just don't want Android phones. Hello, little girl. J jail? Hello, would you like a lollipop? Lollipops are my favorite. His dog is named Cheese. What? What? No. Don't. What? I don't like that. He 
can fish all sorts of things in this river, which can be sold for a good price. Can I fish? I wish I could see what Sky City is like. I heard that everyone is carefree there. Oh, hello, hot stuff. Do you want to come be carefree with me? <laughs> That's a cool looking robot. One sec. The tall, sturdy robot is hibernating quietly in the corner. Oh. Oh, it's you. I thought it was a customer. And I'm not a customer. Old man, do you have any cheap decoders or processors? I'm busy in the back. Secondhand stuff is all over there. Go check it out for yourself. I think I changed his voice randomly. I don't care. Whoa, hold on. These prices are insane. Have you lost your mind? Calm down. I only sell good stuff, and good stuff comes as a price. Even so, everything you see here is at least 30% cheaper than market value. It's a bargain, really. And anyway, you should know that it isn't easy to find parts for that antique robot of yours. I don't suppose you can sell them for cheaper. If money's a problem, my offer for you to become my... My test subject still stands. I can compensate you with some parts. I can't believe you're still thinking about that. As I said before, there's no way that's happening. All right then, come back when you've got the cash. In the meantime, leave me alone. Whatever. Okay, so we need money. Hello, William. William, you back so soon? What have you got there? Oh, William brought over a, ple a piece of ripped cloth with blood on it. Whose blood is that? Hope this is not Chris's blood. <laughs> Are you hurt? I don't see any wounds. Little guy's so anxious, something must have happened. Since I can't do anything else for BBX right now, I should probably follow William and take a look. Come on, William. Show me little Timmy falling down the well, or whatever. Into the sewer. Oh. It looks like William wants me to go into the alley with him. Uh, not yet. I want to see these other... The ramen restaurant. Internet bat. Okay. Oh, hello. Beer! Beer is so delish! Delicious! You want a, a, a beer too? It's, it's my treat! Really? If it isn't Chris, where'd, where'd you get enough money to buy beer? Actually, never mind. It's probably better if I don't know. Just don't try to waste it all, okay? Well, you want to give me a beer. Let's go into some spooky alley. Oh, look at all the cats. William, is this your girlfriend? Judging from her fur, she seems to be a rare cat breed. Good choice, William. Do you understand what I said? Wait, is that blood on you? Let me see where you're hurt. 
weird. I don't see any wounds. <gasps> ah, a dead body. Shit, a dead body. Been dead for a while now. Wait, I know this woman. It's Mrs. Perry. She's the landlord at Sephora Apartments. I need to call the police immediately. Hello, I'm calling from the Sephora Apartments. There's a body lying among the trash in the alley. Please send someone quickly. Okay, yeah, thanks. There must still be some evidence here, since not many people come this way. I'd better look around before the police arrive. Tamper with the scene a bit. You've entered a crime scene. Carefully investigate every detail, as it could be the key to solving the case. Switch to the investigation view to find more traces at the scene. When you find all the traces, they will combine to important clues to help you build the final conclusion. No? Should have broken wrist. Dislo oh, I didn't get to read that. Dislocation of the wrist with signs of fracture, probably caused by falling down or a strong collision after death. She's not wearing any shoe. Post more abrasions on the heel, formed after rigor mortis set in. Oh, okay. A gash, possibly formed when hit by something blunt. Oh, is that something different? Postmortem abrasions to the left elbow. Okay, so her left side is a bit screwy. What's this view? Oh, okay. We have like x ray vision. Liver mortis. Liver mortis on the leg appears when. disappears when pressure is applied. Aha! What is this? Oh, it's. it's nothing? Liver mortis on the arm disappears when pressure is applied. Skin on the neck exhibits nickel allergy. Okay, so maybe she's wearing like a cheap necklace that someone stole. Left hand middle finger displays a ring mark. Ooh, combine. strangely shaped wound. Liver mortis on the face disappears when pressure is applied. Combine! Liver mortis in indicates the time of death is probably more than 24 hours ago. Combine! There's a strange wound caused by impact with something blunt, most likely the cause of death. Combine! Traces of jewelry worn on the neck and the left finger. Signs of rigor mortis are different from other areas, so the theft probably happened four to five hours after death. Combine! No, don't leave. There are scratches on the elbow and heel, and they seem to have formed after death. The corpse was moved at the time of the theft. Combine? First stage autopsy analysis. It is estimated that the death occurred more than 20 hours ago. The corpse suffered a fierce collision four hours after death and was dragged here. The theft of the jewelry also happened at this time. Sweet. It sure is a dead body. Oh, what? Oh. Is that where that goes? We 
just don't have enough gears yet. Some marks extend all the way from the corpse to under the dumpster. I'll need to move it to find out. How do I move dumpster? Oh. Oh, that's a big fat cat. Clear traces of dragging on the ground, surrounded by footmarks. Judging from the footmarks, the person was thin in stature. of dragging. The marks on the ground continue in this direction. I should follow them. There's a large, fat cat sleeping here. The dragging starts from here with more traces nearby, and these footprints all seem to belong to the same person. The marks lead all the way to this dumpster. Hey there, little fatty. It's time to wake up. He's sleeping too soundly. I need something to distract him. It's a Snorlax cat. Aha. Uh -huh. I've got food for you, you big tub of lard. Oh, they even have a, 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 a butthole. How great. There's a new dent on the street lid, which must have been caused by a heavy object falling onto it. Yeah, that cat probably. It's almost complete. Okay. Hmm. Is that? It's a really interesting way to put the other clues. About 9 p.m. yesterday, Miss Perry fell straight onto the dumpster from above, leaving a dent on the lid. Not long after, a thief appeared and skulked around the corpse for quite some time. They dragged the corpse from here to the trash pile and covered it with garbage bags. Interesting. Judging from the time of death and the time of the theft, as well as the thief's behavior at the crime scene, the thief is unlikely to be the murderer. That person was possibly attracted here by the sound of the fall. The thief committed theft on impulse after seeing valuables on the deceased. The deceased fell down from her own apartment. I might be able to find out why Miss Perry was killed if I investigate the Sephora apartments. They finally arrived. Royd, what are you doing here? I thought you'd be putting your feet up on that new lieutenant's desk of yours. Ha, huh, and I would have never guessed that you would be the one to report the crime. It's been a while. Well, since you're already here, a big shot with time on his hands like you would have figured out who committed the murder by now. Care to enlighten me? Sir, the crime scene is under control. What are your instructions? Carl, come over here. I'd like you to meet the famous Rex. He was on the force, too. Hmm, where have I heard that name before? Oh, yes, you're regarded as some kind of hero around the station. Though, personally, I'm not impressed by what I read in the history books. It's okay, Royd. <laughs> Don't mind him, Rex. Tell us what you found. Well, first off, I actually know the deceased. She used to be a friendly face in the neighborhood before her husband died. But as for tonight, this is what I believe happened. Dot dot dot. 
So I think our next course of action should be to investigate Mrs. Perry's home in the Sephora apartments. I apologize in advance if you feel offended, but I think your reasoning is based on unreliable assumptions. I believe the right thing to do is to follow the actual clues, like the stolen jewelry. I'm not interested in your big-time detective nonsense. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to the crime scene. Carl, this temper gives me a headache sometimes, Rex. Shall we find that apartment now? Oh, do I get like a buddy? Yeah, buddy cop. Nice. Oh, are you, are you Mr. Rex? My name's Catherine and I'm a big fan of yours. C c can you please give me some advice? Uh, some advice? Well, this might not be the best time. <clears throat> I'm, I'm so sorry. I still need to take notes. I'll ask for your advice again later. Ooh, a little girl. Hey, Elizabeth, why are you here? What's that on you? Are the street cats bullying you? Poor Elizabeth. <laughs> I don't know why she's insane. <laughs> this child knows that white cat. Maybe she can tell us something. What up, child? Hey, little friend. What's your name? <laughs> That's gotta be the worst way to approach a child. Just saying. Hello, hello sir. My name's Alice. <laughs> Do you know this cat? Of course I know her. She's the prettiest cat of them all. And Miss Perry simply adores her. Do you know which apartment Miss Perry lives in? I need to visit her. Yes, yes I do. She lives in number 303, right under my place. Okay, 303. Let's leave the rest to Carl. Yeah, I'm ready to go upstairs, let's go. Let's go. What is this? Miss Perry must be one of his supporters because his poster's in pristine condition. Okay, a lot of cat pictures posted up. I just noticed is uh, hey, it's like a LED smart tie or something. Miss Perry lives on the third floor. Can you hit the button? Yeah. Uh, so, you want me to go to the sixth floor, right? <laughs> oh, I can click to walk. I didn't know that. Uh, so 303, but first. We should knock on her neighbor's doors and question them. Oh, hello there. We need to ask you some questions. Does this door open straight up into her shower? I mean, it looks like a tile backsplash on the wall. I don't know. Did you hear anything unusual between 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. yesterday? We went shopping after having lunch and didn't return until 10 p.m. I don't know what happened. That's right, I saw a robot in front of apartment 303 when I left home yesterday. I don't know what it was here for. We need to ask you some questions. How is your relationship with Miss Perry? Did she have any friends or enemies? Well, other than some unpleasantness with the steakhouse at the entrance of the alley regarding street cats, Miss Perry got along with most people. She, she loved entertaining children at her place, and the children loved her. 
Oh, right. She also hated robots. Thanks. We have all the information we need. Sorry for taking up your time. That's this neighbor. Is it also scantily clad lady? No. Um, officer? Uh, I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Relax, we just need to ask you some questions. What did you do yesterday? Did you hear anything unusual while you were home? I, I slept all, all day yesterday. I heard the sounds of cats and children when I woke up in the afternoon. I thought Miss Perry had some children over at her place, so I, I didn't pay much attention to it. Did you often chat with Miss Perry? What else do you know about her? Miss Perry was a, a loner. She didn't talk to other people much. She took care of the street cats, though, and gave them food. The, the people from the steakhouse in the alley wanted to discuss the matter on the, of the street cats, but Miss Perry didn't want to talk to them. Okay, so the steakhouse doesn't like her. She doesn't like robots. She likes children maybe a little bit too much. Let me do it. Oh, no. What is this? Oh. I'm not sure I understand this puzzle. Oh! What are... Okay. Uh, sure. I probably need to rotate more than just the outside. So let's see, which of these bars actually connects up to red? This one. We need to get it on this one with the bend in it. get it onto this other side. Okay.
Okay. I think we've done it. Easy peasy, this half mechanical and half electronic lock can go to the museum now. Okay, this lady loves cats. Whoa. Stay where you are. Put your hands in the air. I've got you covered, Rex. Move up and check it out. Just like the good old days. Hello, robot. Campaign documents. Oh, it's like a butler bot. Some hair belonging to the deceased is visible. Soft artificial fingers. Brand new shoe soles with clear patterns. Oh, okay. Wearing a clean and tidy servant uniform. This robot's an indoor servant worker who paid attention to manners and details. The crest indicates he is working for a specific family. Aha! The soles of the shoes were stained with Miss Perry's blood and it's tracked all the way to the sofa. Dried blood. The hair and blood are confirmed to be Miss Perry, so it's highly likely to be involved. Maybe he just went and gathered, like, the, um, the jewelry back, I don't know. The status code indicates that it has shut down. Blood and hair has been detected on the robot, so he's involved in some way, but he broke down here for no obvious reasons. Relax, Royd, he's in hibernation mode. That thing scared the hell out of me. I almost shot it. Wait. What's that on the couch? It's blood. Rex, take a look at this. Did you say blood? There's also blood on the hands and feet of this robot. Robots are unable to harm humans. So what's with all the blood? Let's check out the couch. Alrighty. There are dried blood stains on the front and back of the couch. These blood stains appear to be an attempt to clean up blood splatter. This is Mrs. Perry's blood, and it looks like a full 24 hours since the blood dried up. It's likely that Miss Perry was killed about 12 o'clock yesterday. Also, judging from the trajectory of the blood splash, it was an upward strike with the swing starting at a low angle. Let's assume this is the primary crime scene. I'll organize all the information we have so far. Meanwhile, let me know if you find something else. The blood stain on the couch appeared around 12 p.m. yesterday, which is the time of Mrs. Perry's death. The attack was launched from a position lower than Mrs. Perry's height. It was a child. It looks like it looks like Miss Perry had a visitor before she died. Let's see what other information we can find. Oh, there are fingerprints and lip marks from Miss Perry on one of the cups. The other cup says has the other cup has marks left by a child. We need to find out who this is. Tea was made yesterday from the look of the tea leaf leftovers. Miss Perry had a little guest before she died. Oh, just a wee little guest. What? There should be another matching candlestick. Oh. 
There are some intricate patterns carved on the bottom of the stand, similar to the shape of Miss Perry's wound. Complete white candle. Haha! Mrs. Perry's fingerprints. Combine. Fingerprints are are located on the candlestick. From the look of the candle, it's only been used for a short while. There should be a matching candlestick. This is most likely the murder weapon. Although the pattern on the bottom of the candlestick is similar to the shape of the fatal wound, there's no trace of blood here. The murder weapon must be another matching candlestick. It's not here at the crime scene, so we can't confirm that right now. Pretty much done here. Contact Royd. Okay. Oh, we're not done here. Let's find this key. Anti-robot books. documents Portrait of Elizabeth and William Bloody cat paw prints Hey, Royd, we're done with the investigation here. Let's check the next room. You can continue with the rest of the investigation. Carl told me they caught a suspect, so I'd better take a look. A suspect? Sure, I'll come over when I finish here. Let's go. Is it an omelet? Oh, it's a moose cake. Cat pictures? There's something peculiar about this set of cat paintings. There seem to be some hidden switches in them. Oh, okay. Let's go in this one. This one. Ah, uh, they turn off after a moment. So it's not the number of cats. They're all color-coded, though. So probably these colors on the fridge. Is there, is there a blue one? There, there isn't a blue one. Oh, okay. So... Two, four, one... Five. Two, four, one, five? Yeah. Really? Why? Well, I, it won't let me try putting it in. staying on. So five two. Five two one four. A 
gift for Jenny's birthday. A bronze key. Okay, let's read her journal, I guess. I was feeling a bit upset when I saw you off at the door. They're saying the robots are becoming more determined lately, so the government's getting tougher and stricter and the parade might be stopped. But you told me the robots' actions are justified, as those with consciousness and knowledge deserve more than being treated as simple machines, that they should be given the same rights as a human being. You hugged me and left. I almost called your name to make you stay, but I know I should support your decision. I was waiting for you with lunch ready, but the police came instead. My world became dark when they asked me to identify your body. Soon, I saw you in the morgue. I knew it was you, even though your hair, your face, and your clothes were all covered in blood. I wish I was wrong. My love, my world, I can't believe you were murdered by those cold and heartless machines. I'll never forget what they've done. So it's not 2128. 21st of April? Okay. Feed little things cookies and dried fish. Cutie, Jenny will come visit, prepare some strawberry mousse. Lonely little girl, talk to her. Feed little things cookies, add more water. A little girl named Jenny. Jenny, an electronic diary shows that the visitor yesterday was a little girl named Jenny. Alice is visiting. Prepare fruit tea. Vincent is visiting. He likes mocha cake. Solve the case. Nope. Maybe. Nope. So this one has to go there. Hmm. That could be there. So if that's there. here. Yes. Mrs. Perry entertained her little guest in the living room with fruit tea, and the, the guest struck Miss Perry with a candlestick matching the one I found. The strike didn't kill Miss Perry immediately, but immobilized her. She died sometime afterwards. The robot entered the crime scene and dumped the body. The robot stopped working after that and stayed there for an unknown reason. Hmm. Crime scene investigation is complete. I wonder if that little guess was Jenny. Okay. Let's 
So, is Jenny the girl outside that we talked to? That lives one floor up. Oh. Oh, that bum who tried to give us some beer? I didn't kill her, it wasn't me. You're sticking that story even though we have solid evidence and a clear motive. I'll extract the truth from you back at the police station. You guys are idiots. Rex, you came right in time. This is the suspect, Christopher. He's one of the homeless people from the neighborhood, and he was pawning some jewelry at the store this morning. The jewelry belonged to Miss Perry. This guy? I've seen him around. While he might commit theft or burglary, he isn't capable of committing murder. First of all, the timing isn't right. According to the investigation of the corpse, the theft happened four to five hours after the time of death. If he wanted to murder someone for their valuables, he wouldn't have waited hours before he took them off the body. Secondly, there was no trace of him at the primary murder scene, Miss Perry's home. If he wasn't present at the primary crime scene, it means he was probably the thief, but not the murderer. Exactly, you're absolutely right, sir. I stole the jewelry, but I didn't kill anyone. Based on all the evidence we've collected at the crime scene, the little girl named Jenny should be our prime suspect. The main suspect's a little girl? What the hell's wrong with you? All right, Carl. Take him away and we'll, we'll talk later. Yes, sir. Let's go, pal. Don't try anything funny. Really? Roy, I need you to bring me a girl named Jenny. I need to ask her some questions face to face. Okay, I'll go get her. We, we need to find more about that robot too. Yeah, it's very suspicious. I need your authorization to examine him from the inside. No problem, I'll find you if anything turns up. Sweet. Well, I guess we got permission. Let's examine the robot. In order to access the electronic brain, and to first unlock each slot and remove the covering. Okay. Oh. Brain. I can proceed by sliding out pieces that aren't interlo interlocked with others. Oh. Okay. Uh, so this one is not interlocked. Which will make this one not interlocked. Without either of those, this is not interlocked. Then this. I guess this. anti-tamper protection. Okay. What? I don't actually know what I'm doing. Whoa!
What the? There's an implanted device. going on this is the robot's memory why didn't he save Miss Perry's life that's already a violation of robot principles my head it hurts so bad hey Rex Rex what's wrong Rex what's wrong Rex you look like you were in a lot of pain just now I don't know I think there's something wrong with this robot there's some kind of device implanted in its brain. We'll talk about that later. The new special mission squad is taking over this case. We need to cease our investigation. What? The SMS? What the hell's going on here? We found out that this Jenny is the daughter of an important man. No sooner had I retrieved her file than the order to transfer the jurisdiction to the, of the investigation came in. And they had already arrived, too. This... This scene's now under our control. Leave now and stay out of our investigation. Alright. Alright. Please leave. Inspector Royd, it's quite surprising that you're asking a private detective to assist with your investigation. Rex found the crime scene, so we asked him to help with the investigation, that's all. You just asked him to help? Is that standard police procedure? And I've heard you've decided to make our Miss Jenny a suspect. Does he have something, like, weird on top of his head? Jenny, can you tell me what happened yesterday? I was at this tea party and went home when it was over. We found your fingerprints on the tea set. You were you were Miss Perry's guest. I I was just visiting Miss Perry like I had promised. I didn't stay for long, and I have no idea what happened later. I've accessed the memories of the robot and know that both you and the robot were were here when Miss Perry lay injured and immobilized on the couch. The steward went crazy and attacked Miss Perry. I ran away because I was scared. I'm afraid that's not possible. Judging from the tra tra trajectory of the blood splash, the strike came from below. The robot steward was so tall it would need to crouch down in a weird posture to deliver a strike that matches the evidence. The lack of force behind the blow also makes it unlikely that the assailant was a robot. All signs indicate that the wound was inflicted by something far weaker. A child, for example. That's I... Miss, you don't need to humor this detective and answer his questions. We'll find a professional to record a proper testimony later. Detective, you accessed the robot's memory without authorization? I can't pretend I didn't hear that. I don't think you've found your so-called murder weapon yet, either. William to the rescue. OMG. Is is that the This is simply Well, now we have the alleged murder murder weapon. All we need to do is match the blood and fingerprints to reveal the truth. Well, that's our job. Please leave immediately. Well Inspector Royd, do I need to have a chat with your superiors? That won't be necessary. We were just about to leave. Wait a minute. I have something for Jenny. It's my fist. I do? What do I have for Jenny? What do I have for you? Aw, okay. Happy birthday, Jenny. Jenny. 
Miss Perry wanted to give you this. This, this is for me? Is this? Happy birthday, dear Jenny. You're such a kind and loving girl. The way you always drop in to visit me. Today's your birthday and you're about to become a young adult. I know you like little Elizabeth very much, so I've decided she's to be your birthday present. I know you'll be good to her because you're such a loving child. I've also made a nameplate for her collar, which has been engraved with your name. Wait, what? Wouldn't the nameplate be engraved with the cat's name? Or am I not under- Is this- This is the nameplate. The- What? Okay, whatever. Starting today, Elizabeth is yours. I hope that you'll grow up happily, and I will always be there to serve your favorite cakes and fruit teas when you want them. Your Grandma Perry. What? How could this be? I didn't want to harm her. <laughs> Miss Perry, I'm sorry. It, it was that robot. Jenny, about that robot. Can you tell... Enough! Inspector Royd, get this person out of here. He should never have been here in the first place. Alright. Royd, I believe there's something unusual about that robot. If we give up now, we'll lose critical evidence. I'm sorry, Rex. You know that after the specials take over, my hands are tied. The SMS is such a pain. Now, I'm no longer on the inner circle. Can you get me a picture of that implanted device? I didn't have a chance to take one just then. It won't be easy, but I'll try. You were acting a little unusual just then. Did something happen? Well, I'm not quite sure either. Now that I think about it, maybe something on that robot affected me. I see. It seems like there's more than meets the eye here. But let's talk about that later tonight. There's a good bar I know. All right, I need to ask someone about the implanted device first. I need to head back to the station now. I'll send you the address of that bar I mentioned. Okay, see you later. Mr. Rex, I don't think I'll be able to ask you for advice today. Officer Void gave me a lot of reports to finish today, and I'm getting a headache just thinking about them. Okay then. Okay then. Good job, William. How'd you find that murder weapon? Aww. <gasps> Do I get to be William? <clears throat> Elizabeth, are you saying it was you who took the candlestick away? Meow. <coughs> yes, I couldn't let Jenny hit Miss Perry with that thing again, so I grabbed it and ran away. Good thinking, but... Good thinking, but it's a very important piece of evidence that could prove who the murderer is, so we have to get it to Rex Meow. Yes, but I lost it. Cry, cry, cry. Calm down, Elizabeth. It's okay. What happened? I was so scared after I jumped off Miss Perry's windowsill, I just started running. And then all of a sudden, I was in the middle of the Biocats terror. Biocats? The Biocats territory. Are there a cat gangs? Oh my god, is that cat wearing like sunglasses? I love it. <coughs> Meow, it's all my fault. Hmm, the Biocats territory. A loose billboard. I think I know where that is. Sweet. Elizabeth, time is of the essence, so I need to find that murder weapon now. Rest up and wait for me. Sweet. Oh, electricity. My one weakness, electricity. Mm -hmm. 
thanks to the insightful leadership of the boss, we cats have finally driven those damn biocats from the Fitcher family out of this district. Now we're the most powerful family around, meow. <laughs> Virtual girlfriend, lovely, beauty, er, lovey, beauty, sexual. What a bizarre color of fur, just like those biocats. Humans have such strange taste. Tessio took catnap. Catnip again. He told us he was clean, but look at the trouble he's caused. He deserved to be punished by the boss meow. And on top of that, who knows what disease that blue cat over there caught from the humans. He's been calling himself an artist recently. Meow, one of the boss's favorite quotes is, each cat has their own destiny. My destiny is to be a slave for Miss Connie. Oh, Miss Connie. <coughs> meow, meow, meow. Are you interested in my work? Actually, I'm more interested in that lever. <laughs> meow, you're a cat of fine taste, I see. Perhaps you're my soulmate. For you see, that's my masterpiece. Sure, can you give it to me? The other cats don't appreciate my work, meow. Do you really want it? I'll give it to you on one condition. If you can answer three questions correctly about me and my family, I'll give you the lever. Are you ready? Uh, no, not ready. Martial law. What? To meow with it. It seems like I'll have to pay a visit to the boss, the infamous Vito Bourbon. Feline Turf Wars. Yes, to meow with it. Yeah, let's try and answer Tom's questions. I'm ready, baby. What is my profession, meow? An artiste. Correct, I'm a rising star artist, meow. Next question, meow. What's the boss's favorite quote? Each cat has their own destiny. Correct, meow. I have my own destiny, too, and that's to be a famous artist. Next question, meow. What is the name of our rival family, meow? The Fitcher family. Correct, meow. Those cats have no sense of aesthetics at all. You answered everything correctly. You really are my soulmate, meow. As promised, here's my all-time greatest masterpiece as a gift, meow. A very artistic-looking lever. It's so artistic. We've done it. Insert lever. <laughs> Oh no! I just murdered those fish. I'm a monster. Meow, my eyes are blinded by the light. Lovely virtual girlfriend. Who's Miss Anna? Hmm, you want to meet the boss? I'll let you in if you can make the neon lights become the same color as Miss Anna. Is Miss Anna pink? Oh. I don't want to go find Miss Anna, so... Is Miss Anna yellow? Nope. Pink's gotta be it. No. Wait. Okay. Is Miss Anna multicolored? Ugh. Is 
Miss Anna one of the cats in here? Is this Miss Anna? I don't know. Red, yellow, green. Well, whatever, we'll try. Red, yellow, green. Yes, this is the beautiful shade of Miss Anna's hair. With your courage and wisdom, you deserve to meet the boss. Jump onto the platform, meow. As he get back up. Bourbon family living room. Oh, that's a scary cat. Hold it right there. Who do you think you are just watching in here like that? It's okay, Bradsy. Let's not scare our little friend here. Meow, sorry, boss. I was just worried that there's no need for concern. In fact, he might have arrived at precisely the right time. The Bourbon family could use a cat like him. You must be William, I've heard about you. Most Honorable Don Vito, please permit me to enter the Biocat's territory. You know how to respect your elders. This virtue is rare among the younger generations. This is a turbulent time for our family and its territory, so I've declared a state of martial law. No cat may, ca may pass other than the cats of our family. The good news for you is that I require some assistance with a very important task. If you agree to do it for me, you'll have my blessing to travel as you please. Let's do it. The Godfathers give me an offer I can't refuse. Each cat has their own destiny. Now that you're here, make the most of it. Well, Don Vito, what can I do for you? A biocat has infiltrated our family and leaked information about our family to our enemies. I need you to root him out for me. Do you have any suspects? Meow. <laughs> I didn't see you chatting, Alex. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Meow. So artistic. <laughs> Alright, I got it. It looks like you should get some rest. Report to him whenever you find any clues. <laughs> you can't trust him fully on this matter. Complete this task and you'll be a friend to the Bourbon family. Cool, let's go find Evil Biocat. Is it you? About that bio cat, or maybe I should call him that traitor. The boss and I have some suspects in mind already. Tessio, one of the founding members of the family, is addicted to baked catnip. You can usually find him taking a nap in the safe box. Polly, the leader of the servant team, likes to imitate human ninjas and is always trying to disguise or conceal himself. There's one more suspect, and you may have already met him. This is one of the most trusted members of the family. The boss's right-hand man, Bradsey. Bradsey is a suspect, too? He's a suspect. When it comes to those damn biocats, you can't be too careful. I have a question. Uh, how do you distinguish them? How can I tell a biocat? The biocats of today can be easily recognized by their looks. But the first generation biocat we're looking for is a bit different. Wait, first generation biocats? I thought they all died out. Maybe, maybe not. I recently found a room full of books in an abandoned apartment nearby. 
so I had some of the others create a library. <laughs> I found pictures of first generation biocats, but I couldn't read the human writing. But you, William, you might be able to read some of it as you're closer to the humans than most of us around here. You've done your research, haven't you? Yes, I can read a little. Perfect, go find the materials you need. And let me know if you discover anything valuable. One more thing, remember the law of Omerta. Don't speak about this to anyone else. Or you're dead. <laughs> uh, so who, who, what are, who is that? Is this Fred? I don't care about Fred. You're Rocco. You're Tom. This must be Tessio. Meow, who is it? Lord Tessio is resting, so leave me alone. Mr. Tessio, can you open the door, please? I need your help. I'm busy. We need baked catnip. Indeed. Who are, you? Who, who are you? Spike. Okay. Oh. Oh, a human. Disgusting. Oh, I need another artistic lever. Ooh, that was quite the jump. That was pointless. Oh, I didn't go that direction. Okay. Is this a catnip plant? Old pet magazine detailed information about the first generation biocats, their strengths and weaknesses. Tinfoil. So wait, I don't understand. Tinfoil causes them sadness, anger, and excitement, or does it anger some but not others? I don't know. Is this the only one that's actually a biocat? They need to find a tinfoil product for the test. Well, first let's go look at that plant. Holy meow! It's catnip! Beware, many cats have met their end as a result of this. So I have the catnip, and I need to... Bake it? Seems weird. Let's see. Now if I pull this lever too... Does that let me go somewhere different? Yes. You 
you've got some skills to th see through my disguise. Found the ninja kitty. Oh. Do I have any tinfoil poly? No. Or I mean tinfoil product. Can I just give him the catnip without baking it? No. Where would I even bake catnip as a cat? In this fire barrel? No. Take this lever back. No. Lever, I need tin foil, I need to bake. Oh, there's a lever here. Nobody can hurt Don Vito when I'm around. Yeah, I need that lever though, buddy. Oh, who are you? Father grounded me because of the matter concerning the Fitcher family, and I'm so bored, meow. Sweetheart, do you have some... or do you want to have some fun? Well, actually, I'm kind of busy right now. What's the rush? Surely you can spare a few moments to play the piano for me. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Play it again for me. One more time. We did it. Very good. Looks like I need to make it harder for you. Listen up closely. Oh, don't, don't make it even harder. Very impressive. I like your performance. This little ball is for you. It's a tinfoil. No. A pretty leather ball. Leather. Do you want a ball? No. Who can I give a ball to? Did the ninja ninja did the ninja guy want balls? Try and give him the ball, I guess. 
How do I even get to him? How to get up there? Is that horse a tinfoil product? I think it probably is. Folded tinfoil. Do biocats dream of electric rats? A real biocat will definitely fail this test. Can I wake up this dude? Oh. I guess not. Let's go talk to the ninja with the tinfoil. It's gonna be Bradsy though, right? <whistles> Polly? Did the boss send you here? Just you run a test, relax. Yeah, test Polly, test. Let's begin. <whistles> Looks like there's nothing wrong with Polly. We've passed. Awesome. Let's go talk to Bradzy. I don't think we can test this one yet. Yeah. Uh, maybe we use the boss's fireplace to bake the catnip. Meow. Meow, kid, leave me alone. Yeah, let's test him. Huh. That's strange. Can I test other cats? Can't confront him? No. How do I bake a catnip?
Okay. Let's bake it. Is baked catnip more more potent? This is Yes, freshly baked catnip. Give it to me. Meow, young man, show some respect to the elderly. You must be Tessio. I need to run a quick test on you. Just relax and tell me how you feel when you see this. Yeah, let's test him. Meow, what's this? You little punk, get lost if you're just gonna mess around. Okay. Turns out Don Vito's a bio cat. Something unexpected happened, which is why I came to talk to you first. According to the information I found, first generation bio cats are strangely obsessed with tinfoil, so I used that to test the suspects. None of the three targets reacted to it. However, when I was testing Bradsey, the boss acted strangely. Are you saying that? Well, you've done well, William, but we'd better keep this to ourselves. You've completed your task, so I'll ask Spike to let you through. The biocats are rather agitated lately. You must be on your guard. Nice. I want to go up and see if I can get that lever, though. V, give me that lever. I guess not. Excuse me. Hey, Spike Good. Where's the stray cat from? Go away. Can you see him in the middle of a turf war with this stupid dog? Biopets technology banned. Um, hmm. So we have to stop the doggo? Okay. Those poor bio cats. A candlestick. Isn't this the murder weapon Elizabeth spoke from? Spoke of? I have to take it back to her as soon as possible. Well, well, so someone had an adventure. It's too bad I can't understand you. <laughs> either way, I need... Either way, I need to thank you for retrieving the murder weapon. Here, have some dried fish. <laughs> it's getting late. I still need to ask the old man in the repair shop about that implant device and take a taxi to the bar. That stinks. Taxi. Hmm. Is there more to explore? Consciousness copies. It's so much better to have a fluffy pup in your hand than a cold, hard data file. Well, I agree with that. 
Well, that's really sad and depressing. Oh, we have flying taxis, nice. That hallucination just now, if that really was the last memory of the steward, then he managed to break through the confines of the three principles. The last time this happened, a revolution broke out and my body was left in this state. So the apocalypse garden incident was caused by robots breaking the three laws of robotics. What concerns me more is that strange implant device. I haven't heard a hallucination. I haven't had a hallucination since the Apocalypse Garden incident. I thought I'd rid myself of that nightmare for good. I never imagined it would emerge once again. The invasive voices and frantic memories drove me insane, and I was completely unable to escape from it. I never want to experience that lack of control again. Perhaps this implant device is an opportunity for me to rid myself of this disease forever. I wonder whether Royd was able to get a photo of the device. Darn it, I could really do with some booze right now. Well, that's fancy music. This doesn't look like the music that would be playing in this bar, but... Oh, heck yeah! How do I play? Um. You can't move left and right, just forward. This is not a very impressive or fun game. But it's neat that it's there. Ooh, Ace is playing Prey. I got so far. <laughs> I want a better score. I use these jukeboxes. This bar is nice. Green Hair Mike. I know the Fantasy Jellyfish was one of the first bars to welcome both humans and robots in the Bay Area. Oh, so I'm in the Bay Area. this room. I want question marks all over his suit, like a, like a Riddler suit. Well, well, if it isn't the famous detective. Why are you here? Are you selling information again? Well, you know that the times are tough right now. Since you're here, have you got anything interesting for me? I've always got something interesting. It just might not be interesting to you. Actually, now that you mention it, I do have something related to the incident that happened ten years ago. You might be interested in that. It isn't anything important, and I'm not even sure it's true. Let's treat it like a rumor. 
what do you want in return? Let's play a game of cards. A game of disappearing bears. I'll tell you if you win. Yeah, let's, uh, let's try it. A game of cards. What game, though? Oh, is this blackjack? Is this literally just blackjack? It's a very not fancy blackjack. Hit me! Hmm. Let's try Sandy. Nice. No, screw it. it. Hit me. Stand. Sounds fair. The underground has some rather active robots lately. Rumor has it they're looking for the key to how the revolutionists managed to bypass the source code ten years ago. Is that all? No. I'm good. Miracle Street. Hmm. A memory shadow. What's a memory shadow? Okay. There you are. What took you so long? Maybe you shouldn't choose a place so far away next time. What? The fantasy jellyfish? Crazy name, great atmosphere. It's far for sure, but it's also a good place for a private chat. Today's case is likely to be suppressed by the new special mission squad. I'm still working on getting that photo you wanted. In the meantime, why don't you tell me what's so damn important about that robot? Well, do you still remember how my body began acting weird since the incident at A003 Apocalypse Garden? The gift my partner Abel left me? Of course, in order to save you, Abel chose to sacrifice himself. With that level of mechanical transplantation, obviously there would be some serious complications. It was around that time when doctors identified mechanical augmentation as the cause of the physical rejection epidemic. And then you suddenly disappeared, so we all assumed. Back then, my brain would automatically receive the thoughts and memories of the robots around me. Every day was like living in purgatory to me. But after a while, I slowly recovered. What happened then? Most of my memories from that time are very vague. Illusion and reality intertwined in my mind. But that hasn't happened for years. When I touched the core of that robot today, I had a similar reaction. A visual hallucination. This time, I need to fix it once and for all. My intuition tells me that the problem lies within that device implanted on the robot's body. Brain. I need to dig deeper. I see. I'll get that photo as soon as I can. You need to be careful here. And there's more to this than meets the eye. There's robots in the skies. Since we're here, let's have some fun. I brought an old friend you'll be happy to see. Who's important enough to be introduced by you in person? that guy. Hey there, Roid. Rex, I didn't expect to see you here. Shun. Ha ha ha, surprise. I would never have guessed you'd bring him here. Shun, what are you doing here? I heard you moved away a long time ago. Hey, I can still hang out here, can I? I do own the place. Oh. I don't come here often, though. I'm pretty busy most of the time. But I can still occasionally make time for an old friend. Haha, <laughs> Zun inter 
shouldn't, I don't know how to pronounce our friend's name, introduced me to this bar when I bumped into him on a recent assignment. And what can I say? It started to grow on me, like a fungus. We've lost touch ever since he left the team. I heard you went to Sky City. Were it not for my... Were it not for my bloody family, I would have joined the specials. I was one of the best, remember? Stop bragging about yourself. Everyone knows you bribed the training officer. So how about you, Rex? Long time no see. Uh, that's... Let's, uh, hmm... Let's listen to Sean. After the basic framework of Sky City was finished, my family moved everything up here. I've been helping with my family business since I left the team. It's a boring story. I heard there are no robots in Sky City. Hmm, <laughs> that's, that's not true. The aim was to create a harmonious society in which humans and robots could get along. Nevertheless, the robot population is far from what was planned. However, Augusto has managed to get quite a lot of robots into Sky City. Augusto, I see him on TV often, but I wouldn't have guessed he would run for office. Well, the selection has become special thanks to Augusto's participation. A lot of things have been going on. It sounds pretty stressful. No wonder you look exhausted. Ha! Huh, a lot of trouble indeed. Let's not talk about that today. You're right, let's talk about something fun after all this time. The three laugh about old times and catch up on the years in between. Before they realize it, a couple of hours have passed. Ugh, I'm drinking too quickly. I need to go to the bathroom. You look like you're in trouble. You'd better hurry. Uh, so is this the bathroom? No. <sighs> oh. Okay. So inside the bathroom, there's like gendered stalls, but the sinks and everything are out in like a common area. Excuse me, sir, my name is Brayden, and I couldn't help but eavesdropping just now. Could I have a moment of your time? Sure. What is it? Thanks, I don't know what to do anymore. Actually, my friend, my friend, has been missing for several days. I called the police, but because the call was automated, and because I live in Underbridge District, I don't think anyone paid much attention to me. Underbridge District, that's gang territory. No wonder the police didn't want to get involved. You're that famous detective, right? I'm sure you can find her. I'll pay you. Hmm, you know what? Let me give you my contact info first. Send me the deets of the missing person and I'll take a look. Okay, I'll message you right away. Thank you so much. Don't thank me yet. I haven't promised anything. Uh, lady, are you okay? Looks like this lady needs some help. Help her. I didn't even go to the bathroom yet. Uh, I should have tried going to the bathroom first. Oh, okay. Wow, she's tall. She's very tall. How did I help her, exactly? Oh, I guess I already did go to the bathroom. What if I am a peeping Tom? Okay. I think it's strange that this, like, shared common room has, like, scantily clad pinups on the wall. It's a little bizarre.
What are you doing over there? Come have another drink. Uh, now nah, walk around. I'm good. Hmm. Is there something sus in the bar? A luxurious wine bar. The owner was an extremely mysterious collector. Legend has it he hid some very important things here. It must be treasure. I heard the waiter say there are strange safes in the back cellar that nobody can crack. The treasure may be hidden there. I bet I can crack it. What are we talking? Gold, gems, valuable antiques? You? Give me a break. Hey, this guy's been listening to everything we said. Better stop talking. I'll go look for the treasure. I need to play this game though first. <laughs> we have to get further. <laughs> to go beyond. Whoa. We need to be really... Okay. Okay, never mind. Screw Mad Magic. Let's get those safes. My buddy owns the place, he won't mind. Right? This must be the wine cellar that person mentioned earlier, so I take a look. Heck yes. What a scary place. Hope I can find something interesting. Hmm. Okay. We have a puzzle. The three pointers are the same length. We have many puzzles. How could you decide that just from looking at it? Number something one zero something something nine. One zero something something nine. I just picked up a wine bottle, did I not? Okay. What? No 
Okay, so... Hmm. Queen of Spades. I should write down this stuff now. So that's a queen of spades. A nine of hearts. And a five of clubs. Oh, okay, and this is how we should have solved the monkey puzzle. Look through our notes. Hmm. I should have written down the number that was on that wine bottle. the five. This one's the nine and this one can be the eleven. Or twelve? Two one one nine. Yamaxi area. One of the most cozy ones in recent years. It says it's 2119. Do I have to. F Are there more wines to find in this room? Do I need to use this for something else? I can't move around these other bottles.
no idea. There has to be still something with that. years old. Okay. These lights have something to do with it. This 1149 hint from right here and got a bottle. We did the monkey thing and then think got a bottle. The cards here. Yeah, we did this. This was the 12, 9, and 5. And then 8 years old. Cognac. Maybe ten nine eight. Ten lights, nine lights, and then eight year old brandy. Four year old. Oh. Oh. More than eight. Four year old. And two. So eight four two or nine four two. Something like that. Let's go ahead and get these where they need to be. Four two. No! Eight, four, two. Do I need to do it backwards? It's like two, as I can stay four. Well, I could have sworn that would be it. Really? More than eight, four, and two.
one brandy. How's, how's 842 not a, not a hint? Oh, or maybe 842 is like the number here. There are three digits there. And not actually a code to the clock. In which case I'm, oh, look at this. Four two three. Uh, no no no. Four two three. Can't believe I almost missed that. No. Green is three, and four, two, three. What? Four. Like they're even the same colors. How is this not? I don't understand. One, two. Maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it is just decoration and I'm trying to see things where there aren't. I really could have sworn there would be this because those are even the colors. Maybe 564?
Are there hints that side? Oh. I don't want to quit that task. Is there significance to there being arrows pointing on these bottles? Is the light only being on on the one that is 8 significant? That's me proper stumped. I might have to look this up. Seven nine. Let's let's just see.
Yep. Let's brute force this. This is going to take a long time. Should have started red on um, eight. Well, we're almost. I think we can pretty much say that red is not 12 at this point. Fun and exciting gameplay. I'm sorry. any faster using... Oh, it is a little bit faster with the keyboard. Okay. No, 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 no. Yes. Okay, we have conclusively proved that red is neither 12 nor 1.
Oops. Cap, which was on, I don't remember. the game really wanted to screw with me, they could make it so you had to have it like sit on the right combination for like a second or something before it registers. And I'll never find them like this. Red is not twelve one or two. did something. Oh no. Two one two two. Are we done done with the clock? So wait, what was that code? Um, three, five, and something more than five? Where w were we supposed to get that hint? I don't know. A pretty glass wine bottle. 46 Okay Can I put it in here? No What? Why did I do that then? Oh, it's a slidey thing. No?
know. supposed to do this. I need to get all of these over here and vice versa. I'm not understanding. I don't get it. Um, I really not use these bottom shelves at all. I mean, I know how to switch these two around. 
And that gets them in the right position, but... Because they only move in one direction... in a fixed direction. Yeah, I know that, but... not understanding how this puzzle. screwed up. 
I'm just really dumb. Wonder Tales. Wait, since you're here, you must have solved all the puzzles. You aren't as stupid as you look. Who are you? Who am I? I'm the famous Dr. Wonder Tales. Well, more specifically, I'm a copy of his consciousness, but there's no difference. Dr. Wonder Tales was the greatest adventurer of the new generation, the Lord of a Thousand Riddles. I am also the indefinite visiting professor of the University Union, the blessed taster, a wine collector of the seven continents, lifetime champion winner of PDC, and also the puzzles up to the stairs were designed by you. Of course, but more importantly, I'm stuck in this computer that's going to be scrapped. Can you get me out? I can offer you a knight's title. You see, I'm a noble marquis, and I have the right to appoint knights. There's no way to connect this computer, and it looks extremely old. How did you get in there in the first place? That's not important right now. Be a good gentleman and push the internet connection button, please. Uploading copies of human consciousness is banned. There are many government AIs on the internet that specialize in hunting for private uploads. Not to mention the bounty hunters. Don't worry about me, just press the button. After all, I'm a great adventurer. Nobody can catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Hmm. Well, I guess we don't have a choice. Let's do it. So long, Mr. Knight. Call my name whenever you need help, and I'll do my best if I hear it. Who's going to clear up this ancient computer trash now? Ah, uh, forget it. At least I have a knighthood. Milady, Rex Knight has come upon thee, and he's ready for some rumpy pumpy. Good job, Rex. I'm you know, just casually out here in the uh, staff area. What about it? Why'd you come from the cellar? Only employees are allowed down there. Well then, it's a good thing we finished our business. I think I am done for today. Do I have a way to save? Uh, I guess the auto saved. Y'all yeah, just trust that it's saved. Whew. Oh, cool. Tales of Neon. See, I'm enjoying it so far. It's interesting. Um, well, thanks for tuning in. Later. Peace out.